Hello, hello everyone, welcome to the Metal Galaxy. Tonight, hello. tonight we have one of the finest Gothenburg bands ever grey live here with me. Rika Zander will give us a taste of Heartless Pothread, the orphan st statement before they set foot on the Irish shore in September. Grab your booze and enjoy this interview. Ricard, for those who don't know you and ever uh, grey, can you introduce yourself in a few words? Uh, I'm Rick Sander. I play keyboards in uh, uh, Gothenburg uh, metal band Evergrey. Um, yeah, that's uh, mm -hmm. in a few short words. Amazing. And Evergrey itself, how do you describe the band in just a, uh, well, in a few words? Uh, romantic metal. Amazing. I love it. So, Effort Cray, uh, what I notice, it's known for their musical diversity. What musical sites have been explored for the first time in Heartless Portrait, and how challenging was it? I think we, uh, we don't really sit and think about how we should sound on the, every album. We, we always want to develop uh, our music from the previous album uh, since uh, we want to explore new sides and not to do something we have done before so um, but we re really don't think about it we just do it we write music as uh, songs as good as we can and then what comes up comes up and then we take it from there so um, <clears throat> yeah and, and now the heartless portrait sounds like this Amazing, and it's amazing because in 30 years' time, you just naturally come with uh, something else. And bringing this to my question, what would you say would be surprises for listeners who have been listening for so long, Evergrey? I guess the surprise this time was that we came up with something that fast. Uh, because, I mean, we just we released uh, the last album just uh, exactly a year ago. So that's pretty good, uh, but of course we did, we did we had some more time. We didn't do uh, any shows. We didn't do any tours, so we had some more time to uh, take our time to write new music. Uh, and uh, I don't know. It's you always hear when you do interviews. Uh, some people think, "Oh, you sound much darker. Why is that?" Or you sound more heavy. You sound more melodic. I don't really know. We don't really know. We just we do we do as best as we can, and when we think it sounds good and we're satisfied satisfied with uh, the songs, we we release them. Amazing! I was listening to older stuff uh, from Evergrey, like your previous album, the album before, and it's indeed very hard to pinpoint what is different. It just feels fresh, uh, and it's quite diverse and one thing i think you did differently or at least what was really put forward is midwinter calls where hundreds of voices of fans were recorded so can you tell us more about this process how it came to be and the challenges you faced did you mean the the like uh, the choir uh, with the, um, a lot of yeah, voices yeah, yeah. yeah was that what you meant yeah uh, yeah, we had we had this. Uh, it was actually Jonas who wrote this uh, melody line uh, that started up the song, uh, and then you could almost feel instantly that this would uh, be nice with uh, like uh, <clears throat> choirs. Uh, and then uh, we recorded uh, at some live shows in Sweden. Uh, we we made the audience sing that part before they even heard the song. We just learn them the, the 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 melody at the spot and and we recorded that and then we also did some more uh, overdubs in the studio but that choir is a live choir from a couple of shows in sweden actually 
and no one make, made a mistake when uh, singing this choir. No, it was it was uh, amazing. They just uh, first time they just uh, nailed it. So it was really really amazing, and it's it's true. It's it's the, our, our live audience singing those lines. Amazing. It yeah. must be a very unique listening experience that yeah, you yeah. take uh, forward. Great. So just uh, rounding up the musical side from Evergrey, in a few words, what would you say, what influences its progressive, melodic, what influences we can find here? Just to... we, have, we, we like so uh, diverse uh, styles of music in the band from like the hardest of the hardest to the poppiest of the poppiest and the most complicated of the most complicated so so that's that's why um that's that's what makes our sound i think and and that's why people like it and that's why some people don't like it because it's too uh, it maybe it's too hard to put the finger on it if you know what i mean it's it's so diverse exactly. so it's not would... ACDC, you know. <clears throat> yeah, um, I myself can't, I can't describe myself what exactly you play, but it's a very great album because from the beginning to the end, you are just really sucked into a heartless portrait because every song has a unique angle and it's different and it fits, but it's difficult to say, oh, this is, like you said, poppies, this is melodic. It's like, it's everything just a mix. Great. So... Yeah. That was the music uh, side. So uh, let's now talk about uh, you. You have been in Evergrey since 2002. Uh, I wonder how you ended up in the band, what new ideas you brought, and what makes you proud, regardless the heartless por portrait. Well, uh, the first question how I ended up. It was actually a friend of mine that knew Evergrey. And uh, he, he knew that Evergrey was looking for a keyboard player. So he con contacted me and asked me, if, is it OK if I uh, give Evergrey your number? Uh, and I've, I've, I've heard uh, Evergrey, and I thought that they were great. So I said, yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, so then Tom called me, and uh, we talked for a while and then I did some uh, uh, audition and um, uh, actually the first uh, the first uh, my first test was uh, going with them to uh, a gig uh, in in Sweden just to hang out you know because it's it's kind of important when you when you spend so much time together you tour it's it's really important that you <clears throat> connect with each other so so uh, that that's that that was more important to them than how I played actually, <laughs> uh, but that came uh, later, um, and uh, yeah, and th then uh, I don't know, it it just felt uh, really good, uh, and uh, I felt that I really f fitted in in the band because they had a lot of keyboards, uh, and since I play keyboards, it was perfect for me. So. Um, uh, that also meant that I could contribute with uh, with a lot of ideas because I knew these guys are not afraid of the sound of keyboard. Uh, so so it was perfect for me, the the perfect band for a keyboard player, I would say. Amazing, Amazing. Yeah. and here yeah, uh, keyboard gives diversity. But you said you had some ideas and so on. So what ideas did you have for Heartless Portrait? Uh, I mean, we 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 did like we have done for the last maybe mm -hmm. five albums. Uh, everyone uh, more or less sits at home and uh, and uh, and create ideas, and then we meet, and then we share our ideas. And then everyone can listen and think, "Oh, that sounds good. Maybe we should do something with this." Uh, and uh, that that's so cool with the band now because everyone. Everyone comes with musical ideas, so it's uh, I wouldn't say it's easy, but but it's quite convenient to make an album with Evergrey since everyone is writing. 
So I came up with the, with a few ideas that uh, the guys liked, uh, that also ended up uh, with some songs on our Corpus portrait, and um, that's why we really feel like a band now because everyone bring ideas and everyone feels really proud of uh, the albums we make. So it's uh, it's really close to my heart. This heartless portrait amazing so can you give a few examples what in which song you contributed or which id you really uh, liked of giving for example <laughs> <laughs> well i uh, the song call out the dark uh, i had the this um uh, melody idea uh, that i showed the, the guys and they were like yeah it sounds okay uh, pretty good but uh, it was actually it wasn't like everyone yeah let's make a song out of this so i had to struggle a little bit because i knew this is a really this is going to be good <laughs> so i said to jonas let's uh, i come home to you and we develop this idea and make a song out of it and uh, we did and then we um, yeah, introduced it to to uh, the rest of the guys and and uh, yeah and they, yeah this is going to be a song for for the album so that, that was that was kind of cool uh, and another song reawakening i had um, i had this uh, keyboard idea for that um, and then uh, jonas had had another idea that i felt hmm, maybe if i put my keyboards on his groove maybe it, it would sound good and i tried it and it sounded great uh, so, so that's uh, two examples of uh, my my songwriting on the album. Amazing! I'm going to for the review we are going to give. I'm just going to closely listen to song and listen to these ideas. Yeah, great. The videos of uh, Heartless Portrait when we watch them, what I noticed in the, uh, if we compare them with the old ones, it's very bright colors like red orange. So can you tell us how it connects to the theme of the heartless uh, portrait and how the blindfolded element fits into it? It it was something that came up. Uh, um, it was it was nothing really. We we didn't really plan it. We were we were we knew that we were going to do save us as our first video. Uh, we didn't ha really have any ideas, uh, but then. Um, then Tom came up with this. Uh, he, he had this blindfolded idea uh, because of the song blindfolded. But he had more like the idea for like a, a photo shoot that we would uh, use that, those uh, blindfolded. But then then we, we we used it in in the video as well. And then it sort of started an idea of make it into a three piece uh, uh, story thing theme uh, of the first three videos but but it just came after we made the first one then well let's let's uh, continue with this story and then we we did and then we had one more oh, let's let's uh, also do this in the same in the same story so it's it's kind of it's it's not that it, it's something that just more or less came up when we uh, good fun you know nothing nothing we really planned uh, so um, it's a story behind so it started with one song so i'm wondering then how did the color uh, colors enhance the uh, story would uh, would you say well the colors uh, i i'm I, I don't i don't i i don't know really why, why uh, about the colors um i haven't thought about it myself mm -hmm. really <laughs> so it just it's yeah it's um it's nothing we really talked about anyway uh it's um I'm, I'm, i mean it's it's uh the lightning uh and and the video shooting is is uh, i guess it's more patrick julius the video director amazing uh, that should take credit for for all of that but um yeah, I mean the videos look great, but uh, I'm, I wasn't uh, involved in the coloring of the video, so I, I really can't tell. First time you worked with him, or 
No, no, we we've, we've been working on him since 2004, I think. Quite a long time. Uh, yeah, quite a long time. Um, and and he's done all of our videos ever since, uh, including the live DVD from uh, Gothenburg that we we did 2004, I think. So no, we've been working with him a long time. He greatly liked captures and just brought the album to life. So I'm wondering then if you looked at the all the videos were made, which is your favorite one? Of all our videos? Well, uh, from Heartless Portrait. Oh, from Heartless Portrait. Um, yeah. I think uh, I think I like Save Us. Uh, My favorite. I, I like well. them. Yeah, I like them all. It's uh, yeah. It was pretty fun to do the the more acting stuff in, in blindfolded as well. It, it was like, well, should we really do this? Isn't it kind of lame? But we uh, let's go for it, and then we'll see see. But but it was it was fun fun thing to try as well. You can uh, write a uh, acting experience now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Arrest me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, about the name, name-wise, the album is quite a long uh, one. Earthless Portrait, Dorf and Testament. Any special meaning behind it? Yeah, the the actual title was uh, Tom's idea, Heartless Portrait. Uh, I think it. I, I think we all when when he when he uh, came with the suggestion, we we first of all we we thought it sounded cool. Uh, but but we've talked a little about the meaning of it, and, and uh, it's since Tom writes the lyrics, uh, the the meaning of, of the words usually comes uh, from more from his uh, personal. But it, I think it's his view of um, all the albums we have made. Actually, uh, how how. Um, the story goes from the first, all of the 13 albums he's been involved with. Um, but it's hard for me to go more deep into the actual meaning of it. Um, and, and the Orphean Testament, it's, it's, it's um, in a way from the Greek mythology about Orpheus who... Um, uh, did something. <laughs> I don't know really, but uh, it's 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 a theme from uh, the Greek uh, mythology anyway. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. Oh, we have here a fear question. Sergi Romanenko is asking, Rick, what is your favorite song from a heartless portrait? Uh, I think uh, it's uh, well. It's I, I have this uh, special relation with Call of the Dark since uh, since it was kind of a struggle to have it on the album. So so that's um, extra extra warm uh, for me, I think. Uh, and I also like the title track or was it, what is it called Orphean. I have to check here with my glasses. The Orphean Testament. That uh, that's also um, one of my favorites, but I like them all. I, I think I think the album is very complete. I think uh, every song, every every song is is really good. Hundred percent satisfied with all uh, the whole band. Great one. I have a question for you. You just um, can you show us the album how it looks like to hard listen. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, <laughs> there it is. Amazing. So it's like um... yeah, yeah, exactly the cover. This is the well, obviously this is the CD. I don't know anyone listen to CD these days, but uh, we have it in, in CD. Yeah, cool. <laughs> and uh, inside, if you can uh, show the yeah, first. yeah, it's uh, so it's like this and this uh, little. We can take out this little book booklet uh, like this with uh, all the lyrics, like always, and uh, all the names of uh, everyone who was in the choir for Save Us. 
because we uh, we had this thing that uh, our fans could could uh, send in their vocal parts for mm-hmm. for the save us chorus and this is everyone so if you haven't got the album and you're on in the choir you should have it Amazing. you should have the album even if you're not in the choir of course Oh, you meant uh, some chorus for Safos, if I understood correctly. Yeah, yeah. So it was yeah, exactly. like, like a social media action, a social media like yeah. post. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so they said everyone, so people could record um, that Safos uh, chant, or what you what you call it. Um, so, so it's a lot of people who really in the, and we used all the. All the vocal parts. So, yeah, amazing. So, how was um, how do you say how was it uh, like any challenges of putting everything together, or was it like a seamless flow, like midwinter calls? Uh, I th- I, th- uh, I don't know. I didn't put it together. Um, <laughs> I wasn't involved in that in that part, but. Um, uh, but I didn't. I, I I think it went pretty pretty smooth. Actually, I think I think people did a very good, very good job. So yeah, it's my favorite one, and I never stood still that people sent in. I so I was listening to this song, and I was like, it has such great chorus, everything, yeah. great song. So we have John Raid here asking, Richard. Was good to see you guys again last week. Any news on a Swedish tour after you've been around Europe? Sorry, John, no, no news right now. But you should come to Scotland. We talked about that, so maybe I'll or, see you in Scotland. Yeah, or Ireland. Or Dublin. Ireland. Yeah, also nice. Exactly. Yeah. So Eddie zero uh, five five is asking, Hey, Ricard, is there a song that especially challenging for you to play live? Hmm. Maybe not. Maybe not especially challenging. Uh, we played. Um, the, the funny thing is that usually it's it's not the hard parts that are difficult. It's the easy parts because you lose respect you think it's going to be so easy and then sometimes when a really easy part in a song comes you fuck it up because you thought it was going to be so easy so so that's the hard part being concentrated even through the easy parts of the song uh, but uh, yeah any examples on the easy songs where we need to watch you for not making <laughs> any mistakes <laughs> No, I don't know. No, I won't tell you. <laughs> Too bad we will be watching you and yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. Wait. Yeah, yeah. So Ada uh, is saying ha, and John Wright is uh, saying I will see what I can do on coming to Scotland. Yeah, I know. You don't have to, John. You, you, you have done plenty for us anyway. So. So we are speaking about touring, life, and so on. And so on. Uh, we saw that in September you are setting foot on Irish shore, and you play Heartless Portrait as well as Escape on the Phoenix. Any surprises for the tour you would like to share with us? <clears throat> mm, I don't know if we have any surprises. Of course, we're going to play songs from both our last two albums. Uh, and also some uh, old songs, but uh, I think we will kind of focus on on maybe the last four or five albums, and that's a good thing because uh, it's it feels like our fans thinks thinks that's okay. They don't need to hear um, a lot of old songs. They really like the new stuff we do as well. So. But, will it, uh, yeah. Will it be a longer uh, set uh, as you're coming back from? 
Are we going to, I mean, it's going to be a headline set, set, of course. We've done some festivals uh, this summer and it's always a bit shorter sets. But of course, we're going to do a, a full headline show when we do the tour. Yeah. We look here to see you and welcome, welcoming here in Ireland, Dublin. Yeah, we look forward to it. We love, uh, really love playing in Dublin. We love Dublin as well. So we look forward to it. How was, that, to... how was the last experience in Dublin? Any fond memories? Um, or funny? Yeah, the, 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 we played a few a few places. I, I, I hardly ever remember the name of the places, but uh, we, we played a few places in Dublin. Uh, and we always uh, seem to have like a, a day off when we're in Dublin, so we have time to do other stuff as well. So. Uh, it's it's great. It's a great city. John, right? right uh, I think he knows you. It's the Guinness you like. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like Guinness very much, and it, it tastes uh, better in Dublin. <laughs> I don't know why, but it, it really does. Does certainly, it's super Irish, super uh, super Dublin. So yeah, yeah, you'll be drinking here uh, Guinness and becoming yeah, slowly sure, Irish. Yeah. <laughs> We have here uh, Sergi Roman Nanko. I would like to thank Ricard in Parko for this outstanding word since I'm a fan of Evergrey for about 20 years. I would say that this album is his best work. Such a perfect keyboard sound. Genius. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And we have Bartek Bent Nas here. Hello, Bot. Ricard, where do you get inspiration for great stuff? You do for Evergrey. Mm, uh, I don't know. The, the music itself is very inspiring, I think. Um, and um, it's uh, it fits really. It's a lot. It's a lot of piano in, in it's it, it has always been a lot of piano in Evergrey, uh, even before I joined the band, and since I started playing the piano, I, I think. Uh, that's great. Uh, I, I really like uh, the 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 sound, the keyboard sound, even before I joined. So, so it, I think every gray, um, the compositions, the 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 feeling of the songs are really inspiring. Itself. Amazing. And here is John Wright again giving an explanation why you like some Guinness here. So because it's not pasteurized in Ireland, Guinness that goes abroad is. Even yeah. uh, Sato Desmond is inviting you to Cork. Oh, cool. You have ever been to Cork? No, we haven't. Uh, that's a shame because we all, all only been in Dublin. Uh, we haven't. Uh, I haven't been any, anywhere else on Ireland, so that would be really nice to go, go uh, see more of Ireland. You haven't been in Belfast as well, correct? No, no, we haven't, no. So maybe someday an Irish Evergrey tour to just... <laughs> yeah, that, that would be amazing. Yeah, sure. You like the culture, the crowd, the Guinness or everything just in it? I mean, it's it's uh, one of my passion in life is traveling. So I'm really blessed to play music and travel at the same time. And some some places you just maybe you take a little extra to your heart, but but um, we've never been we've we've never been to a place in the world where we think we would never go again. So it's it's. Uh, I like Sweden, but it's really nice to to uh, um, discover all the other parts of the world as well. Yeah, and I think uh, like Ireland has hidden spot for travelers. Really nice places. Uh, like yes, yeah, yeah. Around nice. So, Bartek uh, Bettner, uh, Bettners is asking. Also, the melodies in Call Out of Dark resemble a little bit melodies from Warsaw Rise by Sabaton. Do you listen to them sometimes, or is that a pure accident? All the best. 
well, it's uh, uh, pure, pure. What what is it? Ex pure accident? Did you say that? Or it's uh, it's it's a coincidence. Uh, I've heard uh, Sabaton, but I uh, I can confess I don't really I don't really listen to it. So, but uh, but Hannes in Sabaton used to be in Evergreen, so so that's cool. Yeah, they're both um, a bit. Uh, how do you say melodic? Like they have. Yeah, a yeah, we like. Yeah, we like uh, melodies. I think a lot of bands, Swedish. Uh, that's the strength of a lot of Swedish bands. I think uh, so, the mel the melodies. So Even that, the yeah. So that is how you would define the Swedish scene then: melody lines or something else. What we can find in Swedish bands as well. Yeah, I think I think we have uh, we we have uh, maybe maybe it's it's the melody the kind of melancholy Nordic feeling something I don't know I haven't really analyzed it but uh, it it uh, could be something like that. I will now when I'm listening to Evergrey Heartless Portrait again. Oh. Sergio Romanaco is asking, "What ever a grey album is your favorite one, Ricard?" Well, it's 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 kind of a cliche to say the the latest one, but I actually think uh, "Heartless Portrait" is is my favorite Evergrey album. Um, I used to I used to think "Solitude Dominance Tragedy" uh, because it's and I wasn't even on that album, but but. It's also kind of hard to have an object, objective mind of uh, the, the albums you've been so involved in. So it's 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 uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to to listen to it because they're they're too close. Um, and and it's like when you when you when you completed an album, it's not it's it's not for for you anymore. It's for the world to to listen to it. And that's why I can appreciate the the, the Evergrey albums I wasn't involved in because I can listen to it more freely. I don't have to be self-conscious about what I did on the good or bad I did on the album. So, so I would say Solitude, Dominance, Tragedy, and A Heartless Portrait. Those are my two favorite Evergrey albums. I imagine. Uh, thank you. I imagine it's very hard to point them out, as you have said already in the beginning of the interview. You are so involved in every album. You are just pointing out ideas. You are collaborating with ideas. It's hard when it's your own creation to say, "I like this one." It's like the favorite yeah. child uh, dilemma. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, I think that's also. Um, I don't see any fewer questions. So, Richard, tonight we have spoken about uh, Heartless Portrait to Orphanet Testament. Any things we missed out on the album or anything you would like to mention that we haven't mentioned tonight? I don't know, but uh, I, I um, since since uh, since we, we're really proud of the album, I really hope that people will show up. Now we're doing this European tour. So check out if uh, we're coming to near your near your place. But uh, if we're not, uh, just keep listening to our music, and uh, we will come close to you sooner or later. Uh, I think we're gonna try to play as much as we can. We get two new albums, uh, and we haven't done any tours. So this is the time to tour, hopefully. Um, so hope hope to see you on the road. Amazing! The Metal Galaxy will be in uh, Dublin, and we will certainly yeah, bring cool. a I hope so. crowd. Yeah. yeah, bring a good crowd. Yeah, we will. Uh, last question for the viewers. Really, yep. the last last one for tonight. John Desmond, what keyboard equipment do you currently use? Um, well, it's. It, I, what I bring on tour is actually uh, um, it's actually a laptop with uh, a main stage. Uh, it's called it's a program uh, because it's really convenient um, to bring. And, and uh, since since um, I use we use a lot of 
uh, plugins on the albums. Um, the sounds are are there, so it's it's no really no need to bring a lot of uh, different keyboards and heavy equipment. When I when I'm at home though, I I play I, I love like old analog synthesizers and uh, I, I I got a Minimoog, uh, I got a Prophet Five, I got uh, I got a Hammond organ, I got a Fender Rhodes piano. Um, but obviously I can't bring that on, on the road, um, but, uh, uh, maybe someday if we, if we turn really, really big, I'm going to have like a park of keyboards and, uh, synthesizers on stage, but then I guess I will need a couple of the road is just for me as well. So, but maybe someday. Great one. So. Thank you, Ricard, for giving us a taste of Heartless Portrait before setting foot on the shore in September. We want to thank our collaborators for uh, promoting the event. And the viewers want to say as well, uh, thank you to you. So John Raid is saying Evergrey rules and you're such a lovely guy, Ricard. Hope to see you again. See you, John, and see you everyone else on the road. Thank you for uh, watching this. And uh, Sergi Romanek is saying, thank you, Richard, for music. Hugs to you. Thank you, Sergio. Hugs to you. And uh, the Metal Galaxy wants to thank everyone who is watching this video, sharing and liking it. For those who are interested in getting a copy of Heartless Portrait, The Orphan Testament, links are uh, below. Like and subscribe to the Metal Galaxy as we have more interesting content coming soon. And I am passing the word to Ricard so he can round up the interview. Thank you. Take care. And see you on the road. See you. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> see you. Bye bye. <laughs>